Hey guys, good to see you back here. Uh, we had an interesting week over at Capital Casino playing in the 1-3 game. Um, we didn't get a whole lot of cards to play during that week, but when we did, we made the most of it. And uh, I would be the first to say that we ran pretty good. Also, Zeus had a birthday and he had a little birthday celebration. And um, as you can see, he got some new toys and uh, he had a nice little steak, some prime rib. So sit back. I got relax, you some enjoy. prime rib. Here it comes. Sit down. I got you some prime rib for your birthday dinner. Sit. You stay there, okay? All right, come and get it. We're back at Capitol Casino in Sacramento, California. Couldn't be playing some 1-3 today like usual. Before we get going, do me a little favor. Write down in the comments where you're from. We'd like to know where our fans are located. And uh, maybe if we can't get a chance, we can make a trip that way. We've been playing for about 45 minutes. Haven't had much luck so far. Uh, this was a uh, $15 open and two callers. I think the best option here is to either fold or to three bet. This time we went for the three bet. We make it $75. We end up getting two callers from the original opener and one player who seems to be playing very, very loose and uh, very passive. So the three of us are heading to a flop with 244N, which comes out king, queen, eight with two spades. It's not the greatest flop in the world for our hand. First two players end up checking and now it's to me. It's a good flop for my range, uh, not very good for my particular hand. And when I hold ace-jack, I figure my opponents have a lot of cards like king-queens in their range. So sometimes I would just check this back, but since my image was fairly tight because I haven't played so many hands, I figured I was going to go ahead and see bet this. Maybe I can get someone off a queen or get value out of some sort of straight draw or flush draw. Don't need to go too large here, so I figured $75 would do the trick. Someone with a king was probably going to call, and someone with a flush draw, straight draw, will call also. I'm just worried about the kings. If I can get folds from queens, I'll be happy. Both players call rather quickly, so I'm going to be shutting this down unless I get a really, really good card. So in my mind, I'm just thinking, red 10, red 10, one time. Red 10, yes sir, indeed. We end up spiking the 10 of hearts, gives us the nuts. Both players end up checking over to me, and now I gotta get value. If they weren't folding before, I don't think they're gonna be folding now. I have a little over uh, $260 left in my stack. Pot's 460, let's get it in there. So I jam, I get a very quick call from the initial opener. So obviously he has this very strong hand. I tell him I have a straight, and we see the river card which comes the king of hearts. He ends up mucking his hand, kind of muttering about how lucky I am. So I think uh, he probably has something like ace king, maybe ace king of spades. About an hour later, I pick up pocket nines in the low jack. There's one limper in front of me. I decide to raise to 15. I end up getting three callers for the 15. So we go four ways to a flop with 64 in and we flop the world. Comes nine, four, four with two clubs. First player check, next player leads into to me for $30. He has a very short stack. Feel like he's on sort of some sort of flush draw. Just going to put the call in. Hope and pray for an overcall from the big stack. Please, he was in the big blind. Let him have a four. Just let him have a four one time. After some thought, he decides to make the call. Oh, this is going to be good. Come on, put up a like a little club now. That's all I need is a little club. Instead, they put up the three of hearts. It goes check, check. I decided I want to keep them in. And uh, if I had a over pair at this time, I would probably bet, uh, charge that uh, flush draw. I probably bet larger than I did, to be honest with you. So when I bet 60, it could be a warning sign to my opponents. First player puts in the quick call. So he doesn't have a four. 
Next player puts in the crying call. He definitely has some sort of flush draw. Looking for a good river, and we get the three of diamonds. Both players end up checking over to me. The flush draw is definitely not going to call. And the player uh, with a big stack, I think he has some sort of pocket pair. Maybe smaller than nines. If it was larger than nines, I think it would be a little bit more aggressive with it. So I'm trying to figure a mount that he would call. I ended up deciding on $110. Not sure whether this was the right size. He does call rather quickly, so I think I might have been able to get some more. I rolled it over, and definitely it's good. And uh, we're running running hot. I'm under the gun with ace-king offsuit. Raised to $15. Get a call from the player on my left, who is a, uh, a very active player. Um want to get involved with pots with him as much as possible. He's been running pretty good today, so just got to be a little wary. Player in the big blind just jams all in for $87. Obviously, I'm going to be calling this, but the question is, do I let the other player in or not? I decided just to freeze him out, so I just jam. He jokingly says, how much is it? And uh, he ends up mucking his hand. He told me later that he had a 7-6. Anyway, we head off to a flop. Our opponent's way ahead of us with a pair of queens, but we have some chances. All we need is a king, and sure enough, we get one king. Not only that, we get the flush draw to go with it. To make things even more insulting, we catch another king. And yes, another king. We make quads. Yeah, we are running really hot. After this, I was car dead for the next two hours. Just decided to pack it up, go home, come back the following day. The next day, I'm sitting in a table with a lot of deep stacks. And every time someone goes bust, someone with a bigger stack sits down. 45 minutes in the session, completely car dead. Finally, I get a pair of kings in the low jack. After someone limps, I raise to $20. I end up getting four callers for the $20. So we're headed off to a flop five ways. And there's a hundred bucks in there. Flop comes out nine nine deuce rainbow, great flop as long as no one has a nine. It gets checked around to me. I figure this is a very safe flop to check, just in case someone might be slow playing. So I do check it. It gets checked around. Turn card comes as a seven of diamonds. It introduces a flush draw and a possible straight draw. It gets checked to me again. Once it's checked to me the second time, I don't feel like anyone will have a nine. I figure if they did, they would probably want to protect their hand at some point. So I bet it for $50, and that does the trick. Everyone else ends up folding. It's not a big pot, but it is the first one of the day. Well, it seems like forever since I had a hand. Someone limps in for $3. I got Jack-9 suited on the button. Uh, it looks pretty good after not seeing any cards, so I raise it to $15. Small blind puts in a 3-bet to 45 uh, he's an aggressive player pre-flop and uh, can really mix it up. Player at the end of the table also decides to put in the call after limping in for $3. He's a very sticky pre-flop. So I think I'm getting pretty good odds, pretty good sized pot. Put in $30. Let's see what we can do. Three of us head off to the flop with 138 and the flop comes out 995 rainbow. Pretty good flop this time for uh, Jack-9 suited. Both players end up checking to me. I feel I can really slow play this thing. Someone might have a pocket pair, or maybe if they have an overcard, they can catch their pair. And if I show weakness, they might decide they might want to bluff at it. So I end up checking it back. Turn card comes is a three of clubs. So there's no flush draws available. Very, very safe card. First player checks. Next player decides he wants to bet $70. Obviously, I'm going to be just calling this. Uh, if he's bluffing, I want him to con continue to bluff. And if he has something, well, he has something. I call. River card comes. Ace of spades. Not a great card. If I was calling with something like ace high, it might slow him down from bluffing. But then again, if he was bluffing with ace high, he would continue he puts out another bet for $70. He doesn't have that much left behind, so I decided I'm just going to get it all in there. 
Obviously, he didn't have very much. He ends up folding fairly quickly, and we take down another pot. We're about three hours into our session. There's a $10 straddle. There are four limpers. I'm in the big blind with ace-king suited. Definitely going to put in a raise. I make it $70. The uh, straddler and the first limper fold. The next one puts in the call. We get another fold. And then the button, who is a uh, pretty good player, He's been a little bit splashier today. I don't know whether he's stuck or not, but uh, he seems to be wanting to get more involved. He also puts in the call for the $70. So the three of us are going to head off to a flop with $231 in the middle. Flop comes out pretty good for me. It comes ace high with a 10 and a 5. There are two hearts on board and some possible straight draws. I decided to bet $90. First player doesn't think very long before folding his hand. Next player on the button thinks for just maybe about five or six seconds before deciding to put in the call. I think my hand is fairly face up, so he must have some sort of draw. I don't think he would call with a weak ace. Turn cards at three of spades. Uh, it does introduce a second flush draw, so I'm not going to be fooling around here. I decided just to go ahead and bet all in. I was originally thinking of maybe a $300 bet, but that would leave the stacks kind of off and give him like a pretty good chance to draw cheaply at it. And if he makes his hand, I don't think I'll be able to fold for another $200. So I decided just to get it all in now. Pretty sure he's on a big combo draw. He thinks for a very long time and finally decides on a fold. We ended up playing for four hours this day and had nothing else worth uh, noting. The next day we find ourselves in a very, very good game. Uh, there's a $6 straddle and a couple limpers, and I look down at eight, six of clubs. Can't always be raising with ace kings and aces, of course, so I mix it up once in a while, and I put in a raise to $50. Get a very quick call from the player in the small blind. The uh, straddler thinks for quite some time before finally putting in the call. Other players fold out, so it's just going to be the uh, three of us. There's 165 in the center. We got position, and we got the initiative. What could go wrong? Flop comes out queen high with a six and a three. So we got second pair and a backdoor flush draw. The small blind now leads out for $65. All right, what could he be doing this with? Well, he definitely could have a queen. Um, it would have to be a pretty big queen, maybe ace queen or king queen. I don't, I'm not sure whether he would do it with a queen jack or queen 10. He might put that in this check calling range. And he could have a flush draw. And you know, worst of case would be if he has a queen with a flush draw. I decided to put in the call and uh, we're going to head off to a turn. I got some equity here. Turn card is a five of spades. He quickly checks. I'm putting him on pretty much a, uh, a flush draw at this point, but he could still have a queen high flush draw. I check it back. River card comes as a nine of clubs, really a complete blank. He checks it. I don't think there's any value for betting, so I check it back, and he shows jack eight of hearts. Well, my hands are improving. I got a pair of eights this time from the under the gun plus one position, open for 15. It's folded to a player with a short stack who raises to 40. I've seen him do this before with big cards like aces and kings. So I'm just planning on folding when it comes back to me. I know it's pretty nitty, but uh, that's, I'm not going to give him any action. Until the player on the button decides that he's going to make the call. And he's a little bit of a spicy player, so I'm going to go ahead and put $25 more in here and see if we can uh, get a side pot at least. 124 in the middle, and the flop comes 987 with two hearts. Very wet board. We got middle set. I'm going to check it over the player who I think has aces or kings and let him go ahead and shove all in. And he does exactly that for $42. Player on the button has been very active. I don't think he's going to fold anything for $42. And so he goes ahead and puts in the call. Now that's back on me. This board is too wet to slow play. I'm just going to try to either get that uh, button player all in with his draws or his pair and uh, or fold. So I go ahead and jam. 
he doesn't think too long before deciding on folding. Uh, he probably doesn't have too much, but with a straight draw, flush draws out there, I'm not going to risk it. So we're going to go heads up to the uh, all-in pot for $250. Well, the turn card is a six, makes all the straights. River card's a queen of hearts, makes all the flushes. And he says, I'm good, and uh, I'm glad I isolated. I don't normally limp in pots, but after several people limped in front of me, I got 6-5 suited. I haven't been catching very many cards, so I wanted to get involved, and uh, I decided just to limp along. Player in the small blind now makes it $25. Yeah, I got squeezed out. I'm just going to be folding this if everyone else does. and uh, But no one else wants to fold, so they go, call, call, call. Uh, what am I supposed to do now? Got a pretty good uh, pot odds here, and I got uh, a disguised hand that can flop very well. I put in the call. We got 128, eight in, going to a flop of 10, 10, 6 with one club. Not a bad flop. Player at the end of the table now bets for $95. Little concerning. He is a pre-flop aggressor, but he is a very, very aggressive player and has been playing pretty sporadically all day long. He could have uh, most, well, I'll just say most likely he has something like a pocket pair, probably bigger than the sixes. Uh, players end up folding out. And here I've been playing pretty snug because I've been totally card dead. So I'm going to try to represent a 10 by just smooth calling. Turn card comes as a two of clubs. And my opponent checks to me rather quickly. Here I'm debating on whether I should just uh, go for it by jamming uh, with my six and a flush draw or just take my free card and see if I make it. I'm pretty sure he has a pocket pair. He's probably not going to fold. Uh, I decided to go ahead and just jam with it because like I'm going to be jamming with my made hands. I'm going to be jamming with my bluffs. Might as well get it in. He quickly calls. We catch a three of clubs on the river. I show him the flush. He uh, doesn't seem too happy. As he uh, picked up his cards and uh, started to fold, I kind of flashed an eight. So I'm thinking that he had maybe pocket eights. Three of the action players at this table either went bust or are leaving. So I decided to pack it up. I uh, didn't get a lot of playable hands this week, but uh, out of the ones I got, I, I made the most of it. I won the 8.30 the first day, 3.50 the second, and 6.30 on this last day. Um, very pleased with the results. I ran pretty good overall. You know, I uh, got lucky on that first hand with ace-jack offsuit and spiked to 10. And this uh, last hand where I was up against what was most likely pocket eights, I did make a runner, runner flush. So running good helps. Uh, I also thought I played well. I uh, kept my patience, even though the cards were just dreadful all week long. Good, good action, though. Uh, can't complain about the action. There were I was at one table for a while where we had probably $15,000 on the table and the chips were moving around. I was just completely card dead and wasn't able to take full advantage of it. Anyway, I do appreciate all your support. And uh, don't forget to uh, mention where you're, uh, where you're from in the uh, comments. Love to find out where all the fans are uh, viewing from. Until next time, good luck at the tables, and we'll see you back here soon.